How you doing, everybody? Welcome back to Mass Effect. Last time, we started on our way towards the Attican Beta Cluster so that we can go check out Pharos. And this time, we're going to continue in that direction, although today, we actually are going to get to the Attican Beta Cluster, and we are going to do basically everything in the cluster except for Pharos itself, because I have to continue with uh, codex entries. But I didn't quite get finished with all the planets I wanted to do last time. So this time, we're going to go ahead and finish up with that. So let's get right to it. Back on the galaxy map, uh, Clensal is finished, thankfully. <laughs> that was a pretty crazy uh, fight last time, wasn't it, with those mercenaries? But, well, uh, you know, we came out of it all, right? This we already got, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Okay, it just resets it every time I go in. All right. Uh, let me just make sure there's nothing else in here, because sometimes there's two asteroids, and uh, so you got to be careful uh, you don't miss something. Although, it's not really a big deal if I miss something in that case, because it's not something that I really care about. So Now, that um, traverse line that I think they were talking about, I think it's like here somewhere. Like in the center of the Hades Gamma Cluster, there's that uh, Ayani or something like that travel line or something. It, it runs directly through the Hades Gamma Cluster. I just haven't looked up exactly what that was, but I felt like pointing it out. Uh, if somebody else wants to, like, knows it a little bit more accurately where it is and wants to point out where it is, that would be well appreciated. Because I... I wanted to point it out, but then I realized I didn't really know what I was talking about. So, probably be better if somebody else talked about it than I did. Attican Beta. Um... Pharos is over here in the Theseus cluster. So instead of going directly to Pharos, we're going to go to the Hercules cluster first, because I think there's something we can do here. I don't think we have the mission for it yet, but I think we can get it once we get to the Hercules cluster. We'll see. Message coming in. Patching it through. Normandy, this is Alliance Command. We're detecting your presence in the Attican Beta cluster. One of our surveillance drones was gathering intel on Geth activities in the region when it was spotted and shot down. You need to go groundside and recover the drone's data module before the Geth find it. Aye aye, sir. Sounds good. Um, I think... Which planet? I think it's the one with the rings over there that we need to go in and recover it from. But before we go over there, let's first explore the rest of the system here. This is the Hercules system. And uh, from what I understand, you know, this is, uh, the stuff in the Attican Beta is named after a bunch of different Greek heroes. Although, I don't think we get to go to most of the Attican Beta's star, actual star clusters that are populated in this game. I think mostly they're in Mass Effect 3. But, uh, that's something later, so hang on one second, let me get a drink before I start reading this. <sighs> there we go. So, Zatharon is a small rock planet with a thin atmosphere of carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. The surface is scorching hot because it's so close to the sun, and mainly composed of sulfur with deposits of boron. Nothing too special about it. Um, I would have, if I had to guess, I would say that's the uh, hydrogen sulfide making that glow, that like pale green glow on the horizon. But I don't know. Just noticed that there's like a little bit of a particle effect on the actual horizon if you look really really close it also looks like some of the stars are blinking out when I zoom in and out from the planets <laughs> I think that's just the fact that I'm on uh, component cables and like it's slowly starting like if I move this this thing you can kind of see when I stop it sort of adjusts the camera really carefully until it comes to a uh, stop like on where it is and it, it makes more difference if I move it up and down like this but you can see it kind of slowing down, and then it stops. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Just something I noticed. That I, I don't think it has any importance, but... Anyway. The proximity of the energetic star Hercules causes constant blue... Excuse me, and violet aurorae in Cy... Cyaded. I'm gonna say Cyaded. Cyaded's nitrogen-argon atmosphere. Yeah, the argon you can see. I said I was gonna stop saying that. Stop saying that! During periods of increased solar flares, the aurorae are bright enough to read by, to read by on the surface. Oh, to, oh, I see. So they serve as a light source. I was like, what the hell? 
they are bright enough to serve as an actual light source for people at their homes on the surface, if there were people living on the surface, and can be seen with off-the-shelf optics from a distance of several AU. Wow. So that means, now what that basically means, AU is an astronomical unit. An astronomical unit is, uh, well, one astronomical unit is the distance from the Earth to our Sun in the solar system. So basically, when, during periods of solar flare, Hercules system, Syedad here, you could probably uh, watch the aurorae moving from a space of like, I'm going to say way the hell out here. That's insane. Wow. Those are really bright. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to sleep on this planet with something like that going on? That would suck. You have to put like blankets over the windows and crap. Probably still get the light through. Anyway, uh, Syedad's scorching hot surface is mainly composed of magnesium with deposits of iron. Fairly metallic, uh, magnetic. A surprising variety of simple carbon-based life flourishes in a complex network of cave systems that wind through the crust, protected from Hercules' heat and radiation. Okay, so it makes sense, you know. You have mole people, but they're there because if they were on the surface, they would be scorching in the 523 degrees Celsius temperature, so... It's also kind of strange that Syedad is warmer than, uh... What was it, Zatharon over here? Yeah, Zatharon. Even though Zatharon's closer, usually it's the other way around. But, uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh, this is Elitania. That's the one we're going to have to land on. I know that from previous playthroughs, so just, just bear with me for a second. We'll go back there. Uh, Zatarus is a hydrogen-helium gas giant with high-level decks of sulfur clouds. That's what gives it the piss look. <laughs> Last time we had mac and cheese planet. Now, today we have piss planet. Great. A layer of hydrocarbons has formed deeper in the atmosphere. Vast electrical storm fronts can be seen flickering across the dark side. wonder why that is. Hmm. Why would there be electrical storms on the side where they're not? It probably has a high magnetosphere then? I'm, I'm gonna say, I, I don't know this for sure, but if it if it, they're flaring up on the dark side, it could be that it's, uh, I think it, since it has a dark side to begin with, it's, that means it's tidally locked to Hercules, right? So that would mean that its dark side doesn't receive any of the solar flares, so its magnetosphere would be really built up and that means that there would be a lot of an electrical charge on that side. I don't know. I don't I don't know physics or earth science, but I know that there is a large deposit of gold on one of Zatarus's moons. <laughs> but yeah, again, feel free to explain why these things happen in the comments. I'm no earth science major. I just enjoy looking at these planets and being like, oh look at the pretty colors in the horizon. I'm an idiot, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it kinda looks like Earth. Level 1 toxic hazard, though. Probably not like Earth. Elitania appears to be a world eminently suited for colonization. From the atmosphere, yeah, that's pretty true. Sadly, appearances are deceiving. Aw, oh, damn it. It's covered by a verdant carpet of mosses, algae, and lichen, and possesses a thick, oxygenated atmosphere. But, the animal kingdom is a web of microscopic, symbiotic creatures. Probably like Earth was way, 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 way back in the day before larger scale organisms evolved and developed. Uh, these are impossible to filter from the air and necessary for the native life to thrive. That's not good. For us, anyway. Unfortunately, they also cause anaphylactic shock when inhaled by non-native native life. Oh my god, that sucks. In short, settlement requires either fully sealed environment suits, so the Quarians might be all right here, or replacement of the entire world's ecosystem, which is not okay. Some have proposed limited colonization at altitudes above the symbiote's rage, range. Yeah, should that be symbiotes or symbiote? I don't freaking know. Or in areas where favorable winds keep the air clear. Huh. Well, yeah, the Corians would be okay here, I think. I mean, the atmospheric pressure is a little high, but... 13 degrees Celsius surface temperature average is pretty good. A little bit more gravity, like I said, but it's, it's pretty good. I mean, it has an orbital period of 34 years, but... That would be a little bit strange to move from Earth to there, wouldn't it? Well, whatever. Uh, let's land here. I had a thought that I was going to save, and I'm actually going to save it until after we're done with this part. Okay, so um, we have a module on the surface. It probably requires a decent amount of technical skill in order to recover. So I'm going to say we're justified in taking Tally along. Um, and who else? 
I think we'll take Ashley along just for some firepower, and she hasn't seen a mission yet. Everybody else has seen one, even though, you know, Garrus only came in to die that <laughs> last time. Uh, but everybody else has pretty much seen some action, so let's let's get Ashley going and see what she can do. Oh, nice sky. I can't tell if it's day or night, though. Hmm. Probably evening, although the fact that the stars are so visible on the surface here seems kind of weird, you know. That wouldn't normally happen, I don't think. Okay, uh, so this planet has a level 1 hazard, and if I get out of the Mako, you'll see there's a little bar down there building up, and that's me slowly uh, asphyxiating myself to the symbiotic creatures here on the surface in the air. Um, so you can't really get out for any extended period of time, so you gotta be careful. Uh, what was I gonna say? What was my thought? I had a thought, now I forgot it. I should have said it before, damn it. <laughs> oh, whatever, I'll, I'll think of it. Uh, but Ashley, I'm gonna level you up real quick. Uh, hmm. Can unlock fitness, that would get me immunity. I have adrenaline burst, so that's good. What does combat armor get me? First aid and heavy armor. I'm gonna get heavy armor. There we go. And first aid, because first aid is good. Uh, does this unlock sniper? Yeah. Advanced overkill. Um, I think I'll unlock fitness. We won't actually get anything from it yet because it's not important. Uh, and if I haven't said it before, I'm gonna focus Ashley on the same weapons that Garrus has, which are assault rifles and sniper rifles, because they just complement each other so well. So, um, I think I'll put another one into assault rifles. Uh. Yeah, that's fine, I think. Put another one into it. So that way I can unlock Advanced Overkill next time she levels, and then I can also unlock Sniper Rifles. So that would be cool. Um, I think the rest of us are good. Okay, Tally needs a couple of little things. She can unlock First Aid now. I should probably do that. Uh, is that alright? I mean, I have Advanced Sabotage waiting here, but does she really... I'm going to undo that, actually. I want to get her Advanced Sabotage. First aid is nice, but meh. You know, I, I'd rather have advanced sabotage and overload. So that way, maybe. Uh... Oh, um, I was thinking about this. This wasn't my thought, but I did remember something about. Uh, let me go to the map so we can see where we're going. Uh, there's an anomaly, debris, and a downed recon probe. Okay. Hmm. Well, I think we'll go to the recon probe first. We'll make our way kind of around this way, because that's up in the mountains, so like we're going to have to drive up over here somewhere in order to get over there with any amount of speed. But this is flat land over here, so we should be good. Uh, UNC lost module. Here it is. So find the drone containing the data module. All right. I wonder if my thought was that the toxic hazard is on the planet so we can't get out and do that sort of stuff. Uh, I forget. Well, but yeah, um... No, I forgot the other thought. Damn it. <laughs> this always happens! <laughs> uh, I was looking at this. And then I was like, well, what can I do here? Oh, oh, yeah. Um, the thought that I was thinking of is that if you have uh, an armor piece made by Devlin Industries, uh, equipped on any of your party members that you take with you, you actually don't start uh, suffocating to the uh, little microbes that are in the air here. So, if you have a Devlin Industries piece of armor, great, you know, equip it and then keep going. But I don't, so I can't really do that. Oh, there's a, there's a mineral deposit over here. I wonder how far up in the mountains it is. I might have to go up a little ways. I think I'm going to go there before we go to the module, just so that we can get to it. It's probably way the hell up there, though, now that I'm looking at it. Um, now it's just the other thought that I was thinking of on the way through here. It was something concerning this planet. Oh, there it is. Almost missed it. <laughs> uh, let's get somewhere flatter so that it doesn't tell me I can't get out. That should be good, right? Yeah. Moving out. There we go. Oh, starting to die to the toxics. Hold toxins. Hold on. <laughs> let's get to it quick. Come on. Come on. Hello. Can I? Thank you. There we go. I don't want to die. <laughs> almost didn't make that one. I almost pressed the wrong button by accident. But we got a deposit of gold. So that's good. Get back in the vehicle. <laughs> okay, good. 
before I die. That would not be good. Getting a lot of the heavy metals out of the way really early now. Usually I get the gases out of the way early, and then I end up going and finding the rest of the stuff pretty much way later in the game, but I guess not this time. That's going to bother me now. I, I thought of it, and then I was trying to think of the other one, and so then I thought of the other thought that I was thinking of, and now I can't think of the thought that I was... I'm, I'm just going in circles here. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, that looks like the data module, although there appear to be either... That's either debris or dead bodies, and either one of those is not good. Okay, that's just... No, those are dead bodies, but they're not any dead bodies that I recognize. Hmm. This is the surveillance drone. But where's the data module? Hmm. A monkey-like creature seems to have made off with the data module. How oh, damn it. Guess we're doing this the hard way. Uh, that depends on what you mean by the hard way, chief. <laughs> it couldn't have been just a simple pickup, could it? Uh, any indication of where we're supposed to... Oh my god! <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to all these monkey colonies now. <laughs> uh, we'll go to this one first, just because it's, you know, along the way. This is still gonna bother me. I'm sorry. It just it just is. Uh, what was it? Damn it! I can't think of it. Okay, I think the short term thought was the fact that I was gonna reference that reference that it was a toxic hazard. So if I got out of the ship, I'd be dying to the microbes. And then the long term thought was the Devlin Industries thing. So I'm just going to say that was it, so that I have a little bit of peace of mind here, and we can keep going without uh, having to worry. Huh. Those are pretty fancy houses for space monkeys. Not bad. I'm trying not to run any of them over, because if you run them over, you get renegade points, and I don't want renegade points, so... I'm on my way. But basically, I need to run in here as quickly as I can and just search each monkey. I think. How do I search? Can I have the data module? Guys? Guys? Hello? Do any of you have the data module? Apparently not. <laughs> okay, slowly dying here. Let's just, uh, let's just get out of here. I wonder if it's only a certain colony where you can get Paragon points for searching. Because you're supposed to search each of the monkeys, but I'm not getting the search option. Maybe it's because I'm running around. I don't know. I know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just not going there yet. Because <laughs> I want to get some Paragon points, so that way I get a free Charm point before I go to Pharos. Because if you've been to Pharos before, you know that you need a lot of Charm points there in order to get... Well, you don't really need a lot of Charm points there in order to get the best possible... Uh, sets of dialogue out of it, but it's it's not bad to have more charm. More charm is never a bad thing in this game. It gets you out of situations where you'd have to kill some people that could come back later in the series and help you out, you know? Might as well resolve things peacefully while you can. Shoot to throw. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to reference that, but that was a little jump just out in the middle of nowhere, so I figured I'd reference it. I'm trying to figure out whether or not I actually want to play any music over the top of this because, it, you know, it's just kind of me going around doing stuff in the uh, in here that I'm not oh here we go we got a search option hello nope 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 uh Jesus that one's freaking out nope nope and nope all right so that one mon monkey colony was completely pointless because it didn't have any monkeys that were searchable but this one did and I didn't die to being, you know, anaphylactically shocked. I didn't die to... Would you be asphyxiated if you died to anaphylactic shock? I'm going to say that all wrong. I'm really sorry. But would you die to asphyxiation? Is that what that would be considered? Or is that just dying to anaphylactic shock? Did I say it right that time? I can't tell. I ain't no doctor. Sam, where are you? You need to correct my ability to pronounce anaphylactic shock. <laughs> I don't even know if he's watching this. From what I understand, he likes the series, but... It doesn't mean he has time between all of his 
duties as an actual doctor in training and all of that stuff. Sam, say hi if you're watching in the comments. Please, it would be, I would appreciate it, so that I know that you're watching. <laughs> well, anyway. Gotta keep moving. Oh, hey, actually, yeah, let's stop here for a second. Those uh, rings that you saw uh, in the galaxy map, you can actually see them with a decent amount of detail from certain points. I guess here's a decent place to look at them, but... Uh, I think there's better places to look at them, if I remember right. I'm not 100% sure on that, but it's possible. Uh, looks like there's debris right up there. I think I'd rather take a path that's less resistant than straight up the mountain, though. Like, this looks relatively... It's steep, but it's not as steep as, well, this over here. That I almost just flipped off of. <laughs> Just gotta be careful, that's all. Just gotta be careful. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, let's, let's not go flying off of the edge here. That would be bad. Uh, we have a crashed probe in the middle of a little valley. Hmm. I wonder if this is a different, like, from the same team. Oh, we can salvage it, whatever it is. Okay, I thought that was a secure one, I was going to say. Combat sensor and chemical rounds, too. I think I already have both of those. I'll do my upgrading uh, later, once I'm done with this planet, because this is the last planet that we can land on before we end up in Ferrocos, so... Whoa! Okay. That's not too bad, as long as I don't go flying off the mountain phase. I mean, really, I could. It doesn't matter. We're not going to get shot at by, mon by space monkeys, you know? They haven't learned to use guns yet. But, uh... Just want to be careful. This is a fairly expensive piece of Alliance hardware, so... This tin can that it is. Let's see if these monkeys have anything for me. Okay, they do have search. Good. Nope. Stop freaking out on me. It's starting to freak me out. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. No. 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 No, and no. Alrighty. The worst part is that I don't think you can run right now, so if you get too far away from the Mako, you're screwed. Like, <laughs> with the anaphylactic shock, that is. Like, you just you just die straight up. You just asphyxiate. And there's not even enemies around to hurt you or anything. You just die. That would be kind of embarrassing, wouldn't it? Ha! <laughs> uh... Well, anyway, our next uh, destination is right over here. I really don't need a marker for that. Maybe Since it's already in my range, I'll put the marker on the anomaly for later when we come back uh, towards that way. And uh, then we'll go there. Oop, I gotta load something. That's not good. Figured I'd save it since they were... Uh they would bother loading something, that seems like a good indication that I should probably be careful. <laughs> hmm. These monkeys appear to have created a colony directly next to one of our little mining facilities. Uh, these guys are all up on hills and stuff. I think I'm going to take care of them a little bit at a time. Because I want to get a little closer with the thing, so that way when I come out of the cave, uh, or the cave, the uh, mining thing, I'm not just, like, dying along the way, you know? Oh, nope, and nope. What are we drawing our guns for? Guys, I, I didn't press the square button. <laughs> yes, I know we're good. That's why I didn't press the square button. Okay, monkeys, please don't walk too close to my thingy. I really don't want to run you over. Okay, I think this is a good spot. I'll get back into the thing if the monkeys don't have the, uh, or if I start to suffocate really closely a lot. What does that one do? They're all over the place! Jesus! Nope. Um, uh, any more monkeys? I don't see any more space monkeys. You know, other than me and Ashley, but that's, that's more of a technical thing than it is a, uh, an actual thing. Alright, well, let's get inside before we, uh, you know, suffocate. I'm not expecting any resistance, but might as well, you know, be careful while we can. 